I now give the floor to Mr. Jean-Pierre Lacroix. You have the floor. Thank you very much, Mr. President and distinguished uh, members of the Security Council. I thank you for this opportunity to brief the Security Council on the developments pertaining to the UN Interim Security Force for ABA, NISFA, including its support to the Joint Border Verification and Monitoring Mechanism, JBVMM, as well as the progress made on the design of the ABA Joint Program. I shall also update you on the latest developments since the publication of the report. Mr. President, the overall security situation in the ABA administrative area has remained calm, but the trust deficit between the Miseria and the Godinka communities remains of great concern. In line with the Security Council's acknowledgement last December that UNISFA must intensify its support to intercommunal dialogue, the mission worked tirelessly, tirelessly with the governments of the Sudan and South Sudan, as well as community leaders on both sides, to come to an agreement on this dry season's migration route. It was disappointing that the parties could not, at the last minute, agree on a number of key points, which resulted in the cancellation of the intercommunal dialogue event that UNISFA had organized in Entebbe. Since last October, we have also seen incidents of intercommunal violence. For instance, last week we saw intercommunal violence that resulted in a total of 29 people killed, including two women and 30 injured from both communities. These violent incidents occurred in Nung, Anam, Kolom, Leol, Aluo, and the Amiet market Zaraf areas. I wish to convey our deep condolences to the victims and the families who were impacted. These deaths and injuries could have been avoided had there been more trust between the two communities at all levels. In order to address these incidents of violence, the mission continue its, continued its community engagement work along with more frequent and longer range patrols. The force commander, acting head of mission, engaged the parties at capital and community level. He also encouraged the use of grassroots conflict resolution mechanisms involving traditional chiefs, youth, women and girls. However, it is first and foremost for the governments of the Sudan and South Sudan to renew their engagement on the final status of ABA. I welcome the recent request for support from both parties towards organizing the next ABA Joint Oversight Committee. I call on the leadership of the Sudan and South Sudan to do its utmost, their utmost to use this meeting to move forward on the issue of ABA. Mr. President, significant progress has been made in the development of the ABA Joint Program proposed in uh, the letter of the Secretary General to the Security Council of 17 September 2021, since the, time, the last time the Council was briefed. A team including representatives from the Department of Peace Operations, the Development Coordination Office and the UN country teams of South Sudan and the Sudan are at an advanced stage of consultations with women, youth, elders and other community members to ensure that the peace building services proposed to the ABA joint program will benefit the Miseria and the Gokvinka in a conflict sensitive manner and where the needs are at the highest. I am encouraged by the political support from, for the program from the governments of South Sudan and the Sudan. I appeal for your continued political support to the program so that it can have a lasting impact on peace in ABA. On human rights, UNISFA continued to face challenges documented human rights violations and abuses due to its lack of human rights expertise. However, it was encouraging that a team of human rights officers were granted temporary visa to conduct an assessment mission to ABA last March. Mr. President, I, 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 am I still with the Security Council? I, I am not sure uh, that uh, the connection yes. is still with the Council. We can, we can hear you, you clearly. Thank you. Okay. okay, thank you for confirming this. Thank you. So, um, I, I was uh, uh, saying that on human rights, UNISFA continued to face challenges documenting human rights violations and abuses due to its lack of human rights expertise. However, it was encouraging that a team of human rights officers were granted temporary visas to conduct an assessment mission to ABA last March. 
There was also small but important progress with regard to the party's obligations towards improving the meaningful participation of women in decision making. In the Ngogdinka community, a woman was appointed in each of the 13 traditional courts. We are also pleased to inform that during the reporting period, a rule of law team from the Department of Peace Operations was able to successfully conduct a four-week assessment for the development of a rule of law support strategy. The strategy, which is forthcoming, seeks to apply rule of law tools and mechanisms to advance the mission's core mandated tasks of increasing security and the protection of civilians in line with Security Council Resolution 2906. The strategy, which will be consulted with all relevant United Nations entities, including via the Global Focal Point for the Rule of Law, will also inform any potential engagement of the Sudan and South Sudan UN country teams in ABA on rule of law matters. Unfortunately, during the reporting period, there has been no progress on the deployment of the three form police units as mandated by the Security Council. Despite the continued efforts from UNISFA leadership, visas have not been granted for, to the three form police units and additional individual police officers. We continue to appeal to your continued support on this matter. Mr. President, the humanitarian situation in the Abia area has deteriorated since I last briefed this council. My humanitarian colleagues went from servicing 103,000 vulnerable people during the last reporting period to a stunning 240,000 currently. This was largely due to the violence between Twigdinka and Gokdinka communities near Ajok in February and March, when 26 people were killed and many more injured. It is also very concerning that two humanitarian workers lost their lives as a result of those events. Hundreds of humanitarian workers were evacuated and the people in the area are still deeply impacted by a significant decrease in medical services. Turning to UNISFA's other mandated area, namely its support to the Joint Border Verification and Monitoring Mechanism, or JBVMM, there has been no progress on re-operationalizing JBVMM team sites 11, 12, and the headquarters of Sector 1 in Gokmashar after UNISFA was forced to, forced to relocate in 2021. A new JBVMM force is present in the JBVMM locations that are operational, and the force is ready to implement this important mandate in all locations previously agreed between the parties. It is key that the government of South Sudan continues its, effort, its efforts to enable the return of the JBVMM to those areas as soon as possible, as agreed during the Joint Political and Security Mechanism me meeting on, of September 2021. Mr. President, I wish to end my remarks by strongly emphasizing the need to ensure, to ensure safety and security of UNISFA's peacekeepers as they carry out their difficult mandate in a complex operating environment. In the past two months alone, we saw three direct effects on UNISFA patrols, resulting in the injury of one peacekeeper, one damaged vehicle and one attack just last week involved a rocket-propelled grenade. Such direct, serious violence against the United Nations peacekeepers must end immediately. I call on the relevant authorities, consistent with their obligations under the Status of, force, of Forces Agreement, to investigate these incidents as a matter of priority. Finally, I would like to thank Major General Benjamin Sawyer and the women and men in his UNISFA team for their continued hard work, including overseeing and supporting the successful and challenging transformation of the mission into a United Nations multinational peacekeeping force is in just a few months. The reconfiguration was in addition to their other mandated tasks, which they continue to carry out with sensitivity and determination. I would also like to thank Major General Kefrali Amde Tesema and all Ethiopian peacekeepers for their contribution and the commitment they demonstrated to peace and security in Abyei over the years. In conclusion, I would like to thank the continued support by the Security Council to UNITA and seek the Council's support for the Secretary General's recommendation to extend the mandate of UNISFA for a further period of six months until the 15th of October 2022. And I thank you, Mr. President. I thank Mr.